Well, the last couple of days, I've been really thinking a lot about creativity. What really got me going was I saw a story about the Leonardo da Vinci painting Salvatore Mundi, Savior of the World, and the story of that painting. See, it was painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the 1500s, and which was one of the things that was unique about it is they said that he hardly ever finished anything. He started a lot of things, but didn't finish hardly anything. So, except for a few things. And so they knew that it, was, it wasn't just for, uh, for his pleasure, but it was something that somebody had commissioned, somebody important had commissioned. And so you go through history, and it ends up in uh, several of the English kings' uh, possession, three to be exact, and uh, it's used to pay off a debt of one of the kings, and then it's brought back into the palace. And then it disappears in the 1700s. And it's, and it's gone for over 300 years. And then in 2005, a guy in uh, Louisiana went to an auction and saw this painting. And it's supposedly a reproduction. So he buys it for less than $10,000, which, you know, in... A reproduction of a da Vinci painting, you know, that's pretty good money. And so he had t taken it, and he called a friend of his that does professional restoration. And he said, I need you, this thing's, you know, really had some really bad repairs done to it and things like that. I want you to clean it up for me. So he takes it to this lady, and she begins to clean it up. It begins to, there was it had been painted over and and things that had been done to it there were some some repairs done on in the chin area so they put some nasty red paint made a little red beard on it and all kinds of things like that and so as she began to restore it she began to see the the beauty in it but she really didn't think it was a, a, an original Leonardo da Vinci until she got to the mouth and she was going to restore the mouth and look at that and she thought I remember there was an article written by a professional restorer about restoring the mouth of the Mona Lisa. So she found that article and found the how they did it and actually clipped a, a, a picture of Mona Lisa's, just her mouth, and was restoring the mouth. And she says, as I began to do that, I began to come to the realization this is an authentic Leonardo da Vinci. Long story short come to find out it was a lost masterpiece and it is it was sold at auction at Christie's for over 450 million dollars and so can you imagine the guy that sold this painting as you look at the picture it began to I began to look especially the hand that is doing the blessing I can't hardly do it you know the the benediction blessing thing it looks like a photograph, but I look at the eyes of this is supposed to this is supposedly Jesus, but he's in Renaissance attire, and he's got curly hair hanging down, beautiful hair, and just I don't know just the look in his eyes, and he's holding a crystal orb, which uh, is signifying the world and and you know, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of symbolism in it, but it's just it's just a beautiful painting. It moved me. And I'd given a sermon years and years ago, uh, back in when I was in Princeton, Texas, at the church there, on the creativity of God. Because, see, the first way we know God is as Creator, not as Father, not as uh, the Lord of Heaven's host and all this other stuff. In Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created. And so I began to talk about how God has created us in his image and after his likeness. And so if he is a creative, if he creates, because he can create something out of nothing, we actually have that same ability. We have the ability to imagine things and bring them to life. See, in creation, the, the triune Godhead was in, enacted. God conceived of what needed to happen Jesus, the Son, who is the Word of God, spoke it, and then the Holy Spirit, who was hovering over the face of the deep, took action and created it. 
And so we have that triune God inside of us, and God gave us an imagination. Why did he give us an imagination? To imagine. See, I grew up in a a, a church, uh, or in a culture, not specifically a church, not my dad's church, but in a culture where imagination was evil. And see, that is a tactic of the enemy to get people to believe that the imagination that God gave them, because people have used their imagination for for evil, so and it's just like anything that's ever been done in the world, usually the church is against it to start with. What I want to tell you is God gave you an imagination so that you can imagine things. You can conceive of things. So you can reflect his glory in this earth as a creator. Now, see, listen, I'm not just talking to uh, painters or, or musicians or the, all of the arts, what you would call the arts. I, I'm encouraging the arts because I'm an arts patron. I was a fine arts major in college for the little bit of time I was in college. I, I just, I love the arts. And I'm believing, I believe God wants to, if not just through me, through our ministry, is bring a, a renewed renaissance of the arts back into the church so that the church can be surrounded by creativity again. We've been in these stale, stale, sterile environments for so long that we've attributed that to God. And my assertion is, is God wants us to be aware of creation, be aware of things that are created by people, not to worship those people, not to worship those creations, but we see the glory of God revealed in what is created from the mind of man. So the heart of God can be revealed through the mind of man in creation. But see, I'm not just talking about artwork. I'm talking about everything that you do in your life, what you're gifted to do, the things that you are gifted to do. God has called me to be a teacher. He has gifted me in the teaching gift, in the prophetic gifts, and in the uh, uh, administration gifts. So he's gifted me in those gifts. Number one is teaching. If you followed any of my podcasts, you've, you've learned that, that my number one is teaching. And I am energized by that. And so God wants me to be creative through my teaching to show his glory on this earth. So it's not just art. I can't paint. I'm a poor musician. I can play guitar and bass, but I'm, I'm pretty poor at it because I don't do it. I haven't practiced it. I'm a, I'm a fair singer. I, I sing okay. I'm talented that way. Uh, I'm not awesome by any stretch of the imagination. Not as good as my wife. But I can appreciate it. And the thing is, is when things are created through the imagination of man, because God gave you that imagination, and there's an anointing on that because it's your gifting, when you create, then it moves people. See, we we can conceive because we have an imagination we can conceive of a thing but it doesn't have potential until we speak it see we're we're redoing the creative process god conceived the son spoke it and the holy spirit acted so we can conceive of things but as long as we just leave them in our minds and we don't do anything with them there's no potential there but until we speak it because we are prophetic beings, because we, as we declare things, we speak things into existence, just like God does. We can do that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs says that. We can, can speak, if you speak to this mountain, say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, cast into the sea, it shall be done, if you doubt not in your heart. So we can speak things. It has potential when we speak it, but it will not affect anyone. See, I can have all kinds of ideas, and I do. I have a lot of ideas, and then I'll talk about them. I'll talk about the ideas, and there's potential in that. But there is no effectiveness. No one's life is affected until I actually act on that thing. So I go through the whole creation, the three-step creation process. I conceive it, I begin to speak it, and then I act on it. And so I believe that we need to partner with God in creation. We need to partner with God in creativity. 
those of you that write poetry and prose, come on, please write some beautiful poetry that will move our emotions. God gave us emotions. Another thing of my raising that I was around was we, we wanted to divorce ourselves from our emotions. We wanted to become drones. We wanted to become, you know, those that were emotionless. But God gave us emotions. So we we want to produce and create things that move people. I I my goal through my teaching is to actually inspire someone to become who they are created to be. That's my goal. My vision statement is is to teach and instruct and help people find who they were created to be and have them walk in that calling. That's why I try to I'm trying to become more creative in what I do. So, you know, I have I've put sermons online from where I'm preaching stuff, but I'm going to keep putting content out because I can't not do it because once I have discovered who I am and I've discovered my gifting, I have discovered that if I put it out there, then it has effect. And, you know, it may not speak to some people, but there are some people that this will act as if it's just one person that actually gets a, a grasp on who they are. And I'm passionate about creatives um, and everybody's a creative. Everyone is a creative. And especially if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you have that creativity. But even those that are not born again are creative because they're made in the image of God. But can you imagine that creativity that is innate in us, that is born in us, in our DNA, that creativity that is there with an anointing on top of it, with, with the impetus of the Holy Spirit, the, the direction of the Holy Spirit behind it, the one who knows all things, that can guide us into all truth, can teach us all things. If we have him to guide and direct it, and I'm not saying that you have to do Christian art. You know, this was a picture of Jesus, but it was done by Leonardo da Vinci. I don't think he was a priest or anything like that. I mean, everybody back then did did religious art. In the Renaissance, that's what they did because they were commissioned by by the church, by, you know, bishops and popes and, and those kind of things, and royals, and royals wanted to have religious art around and, and things like that. And so there's a lot of religious art. But I'm telling you, there is some other art that is not religious in nature, that is not, you know, everybody doesn't have to paint a painting of Jesus. Everybody doesn't have to do a cross painting. Everybody, use your imagination and paint what God gives you and allow the the creativity in that uh, piece of art or that piece of work that you do, that thing that you do, uh, whether it's in a business setting. I mean, if you're if you're working and you're you're crunching numbers, allow the creativity of God inside of you to find new ways to to manage finances, to find new ways to to show give do reports. Because if we can, I mean, I've been in meetings where we've given financial statements and I just wanted to sleep because it's just boring. If you can create new inventive ways of presenting financial statements to people, it will make them aware of what's going on and you can accomplish the task of the, the organization you're part of quicker and more people will be inspired to do it. So see, it's not just painting. It's not just photography. It's not just music. But I want... I. My goal is to help people learn who they are and become who they are fully, and that is a creative. One of the major things is that you are created to create. You're not here just to exist. Everybody is a creative, and I want you to, to get that because we have to go through it. See, the person with the answer is the most influential person in a room full of questions. So if there are no people with no ideas around, if you have ideas, then you become the most influential person. If you're allowing your creativity to flow and, there are, and you're in a group of people that are seeking answers and you allow that creativity to grow, 
you become the most influential person in that room. And so it has a purpose. It has that purpose. The purpose of creativity is to move people. It's to influence people. It's to cause people to take action on things. See, there have been people that have been moved by things. I saw a video of a girl that when she was uh, eight years old, her mother suffered a stroke and lost her job. And so they had to go on, on uh, public assistance and had to go to food pantries and stuff like that. And it was like they were they had to dig through all the, you know, all the trash to find anything good. So at 13, after her mother was totally, healed, uh, you know, restored and had been healed and through medicine and things like that, she started a food pantry and and set it up just like a grocery store. And so people actually had shopping carts. They went through and they picked up and they had a certain dollar amount that was given to them, not real dollars, but a certain dollar amount they could spend. And they could, and they had fresh vegetables. They had all these things. They took all the, the rotten vegetables out. There was no, all the, everything was, was good. And so it just, she had this whole idea of making it a place where people could be respected people weren't judged and people weren't respected because of what she she went through see she had an idea she had this idea and it it has helped so many people and there was one lady being interviewed that that is a professional she had a degree and it was professional and her husband was actually going through his college she was helping him go through college to get his to his uh, doctorate or whatever it was and then she got sick and she lost her job and so she said, I, I come here because I'm not judged. She said, I used to judge people that did that used assistance like this. I used to judge them, but I've because now I'm one of them. I come here because they they treat me like one of the family. They treat me like a, a customer. They treat me like a real person, somebody that's, that's valuable. See, that kind of thing inspires. I mean, I get inspired by things like that. I want to go st- you know, start a food pantry. Every time I get inspired by someone, I want to go do some, do what they're doing. But I want to, what I have to do is I have to take that inspiration and I have to focus it through my giftings because I could go start so many different things. I could go do so many different things when I get inspired. But if I focus that inspiration through my gifting, then that will, that will be more effective because I am operating in what I'm called to do and what I'm gifted to do. And so I just wanted to spend a few minutes to talk to you about creativity. I hope that it it inspires you to take a step. If you've been holding back because you're afraid, um, don't don't be afraid. Express yourself. Express yourself in creative ways. Express yourself in the way that you know how to express yourself. Be creative. Don't worry about it. There may be people that might judge you. There may be people thinking you got these grandiose ideas, but let them think it because they have no control over you. They have no control over your destiny. Only you have control of your destiny. The life you want to live can only be accomplished by you living that life. Don't ever let someone else dictate how you live because you were created as a unique individual God has made you unique. He's made you an individual. And as I've talked about before, there's an aspect of God's glory that's inside of you that I will never see unless I see it in you. And if you don't live your life full out to the full extent of who you're supposed to be, if you don't live your life all out, then you're cheating me and others because we can't see that aspect of God's glory that's been implanted inside of you. And I need to see that aspect of God's glory. I need to see that aspect of him and his his person and his his nature. That way I can see who he is. I can learn who he is. We learn how God is through other people. We learn how he isn't and we learn how he is. And so if you will express that glory, that thing that's placed inside of you, don't try to be who you're not. Don't try to be someone else, but be be honest, be true to yourself, be true to who you are. You know, there are things that you love that other people just don't find interesting. Just do that. Do it. And the thing is, is a man's gift makes a way for him in the Scripture. A man's gift makes a way for him. So uh, this is just some musing, some thoughts on creativity, and I hope you're challenged. 
and I look forward to seeing you next time. If you if you want to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and uh, that way you don't miss a video when I put it up. Uh, you can go to my Discover You podcast and subscribe to that. I'm putting right now. We're still going through the uh, motivational gifts, and when we finish those up, I've got sermons that I've I've posted. Uh, different things, and then I, you know, I'll do bonus episodes periodically when I get inspiration to, to say something. I'll just do a bonus episode so you won't miss those things. So please subscribe. Uh, I want to also thank those that are supporting us on a monthly basis, supporting us as a mission project through what we're doing, reaching out to this this culture, this world, reaching out to uh, South Africa, our, mission, our work there. And so we're excited about what God's doing, and we're I look forward to you. Uh, to talking to you again soon. Thanks.